All right, how's it going, y'all? So people keep asking me about like my extensions and what I use. So what I'm going to do is make a video of me basically showing you my extensions. I don't use that many, to be honest. And then I'll probably just put this in the description of all my videos because people ask me the same questions over and over again. So they must really like these extensions. So the the ones that are the most important, in my opinion, at least the ones that people ask the most questions about are what is my theme? This theme right here is called the community material or called like material community. So if I go to my installed extensions, we got the community material theme. This one gives you a set of cool themes that you can use. And more specifically, you can change the theme. So I'll just go ahead and do a command shift P and I'll say theme and I can change my theme to whatever I want. And you get a couple of cool ones here. You get like some blue, some blacks, um, but I use the community material theme high contrast, right? I like using high contrast. I think my eyes are getting worse as I get older. So anything high contrast works the best for me. And people also ask me what my font is, which I'm just using the default that comes with VS Code. So whatever this is, I think this might be some Mac fonts. But I guess if you're on a different OS, you might have a different font family than I do. But I guess it uses this, falls back, falls back, and then falls back to monospace. So that's what I use for my fonts and my, my theme. I also like using the uh, shades of purple theme, but I don't have that set up right now. So then let's actually talk about the color highlight. So color highlight. I use that because I want to be able to see my colors in my, my CSS. So this basically takes the styling of your hexadecimal and makes it a, a nicer color. So I can just like get a quick feel for like what is a color. Um, I used to also have like a color picker one too where it had like a little box you can click on it. But I just uninstalled that one because I didn't really ever use it. So that one's cool. Color highlighter. Okay, so error lens. This is the one that everyone asks about. So if you don't have this thing turned on, let me just turn it off and show you guys. If you don't have this thing turned on and you have errors in your code, uh, I might have to reload. Let me just reload real quick. Let's see. So if you don't have it turned on, notice that there is a little red like squiggles underneath the word, which is not very easy to see. Like it's very easy to not see that because it's so faint. And also the only other place you see is this problem thing, which has like a super hard to see like circle with a one. That's the only place that tells you you have an error, which sucks because when you're dealing with coding and you like, it, it, you want to fix the errors as soon as you make them and not come back 20 minutes later, noticing that you just didn't notice that you had something misspelled. So what I like to have set up is something called error lens, which I have it turned off. So let me turn it back on. And that's going to put the error right in your face. It tells you exactly what the error is, and you aren't going to miss it. It's just red text, and it, you just see this red text all over your code, and it just helps you be more productive because you can nip the errors right in the butt right when you see them. So let me just go ahead and fix that one. So that's my theme, that's my font, and that's error lens. All the other extensions, I mean, I don't know if they really people care about them, but let me just go ahead and walk you through them. So. This one, the indent rainbow, this is how you get these cool little rainbows. It just helps you get more like a visual feedback to know like where do your indentations in and start, especially if you have a function that's really long, it's good to like know, okay, everything inside of this thing, uh, everything inside of this div starts at the purple, right? So if I scroll down, I can see the purple and I know that everything inside the purple is here, right? So if I delete that, I know that it's just the div, the inside of the div I deleted. So Rainbow Highlight is definitely recommended to install. I just installed this today, today, I believe, and I just don't know why I didn't have it installed. I, I used it in the past. I just forgot when I got a new computer, I guess. So that's Indent Rainbow. Uh, ESLint, of course, is that plugin that I have that tells me when I do stuff wrong and is automatic, automatically formatting my code when I, you know, don't have it formatted correctly. So that's the ESLint plugin that's doing all that with my ESLint config file that I have set up in my file with my prettier config file. So you got to have prettier and ESLint set up um, to get kind of the same feedback that I'm getting. So this one, ES7 plus React Redux React Native Snippets. This one's really, really useful. And let me show you real quick while that's useful. Um, if I go to any page and I just go ahead and like make a new component here. So let's just like temp.tsx when you have a brand new component you can do a couple of things to like kind of scaffold out what you want so the ones i use the most with this plugin i'm talking about 
as RAFC. So this will create a component for you and export it with a named export. I use this one the most, RFC like that. Get good at typing it, you can create new components real quick. There's another one too, um, RAFCE, and that's gonna do a default export of the component. I don't really do this that much, but it's useful if you need to make a next page because I think the page is in next. Uh, let me go to the teacher wizard. Uh, the pages in next require it to be a default export. Okay, so like if I'm making a new next page, then I'd probably do the RFCE and do that. There's a bunch of other snippets in here as well, but I honestly, I don't use that many. Like there's probably one for like use state. I don't remember what it's called. Uh, let's go to this real quick and see if they tell me. Do they tell me what I can do? Snippets. Take me to a page. There's one for state. Um, IMRS. That's for importing it. I don't know. You can like kind of read through these. I think there's one that actually like will generate some state for you, but I just find it much easier just to type out the word. Like if I need state here, I'll just say use state. Go like this and then auto import the file. It already got auto imported. So const a set a like this. I mean, there might be a faster way to do that with like your own custom code snippets, but once you have like a state in a file, I find it easier just to copy and paste it. And then I could just go ahead and do that. I like copy, paste it again. I could just go ahead and do that, right? It's faster than doing the snippets once you already have something you can kind of copy and paste and build upon. But anyway, let's just go through. We did the top four, I believe, git lens. So this one is what's telling me like who changed the file. So if I go ahead and go back to deleting that temp file because I don't want that anymore. If I hover over any of these, it tells me who changed it last, when they changed it, and what was like the commit message for when they changed it. This is useful when you're working on like a team of other people because you might go through and you find a bug or you find some like logic that you're just not sure about. So you hover over it to see who added this logic and it tells you exactly who it was. Or usually what happens if you find a bug, you hover over it to see like, man, who's dumb enough to add this bug? And it turns out it was you two years ago. So Git lens is what's telling me that. Once you have it set up, it gives you a bunch of additional things, I believe, in your source control tab. So like you can get history on the file. And like I can see like how did this file change over the, the months slash years? And I can go back in time to see history. This, this extension is super useful. So if you're working with Git, definitely install Git lens. Um, you also can see your stashes and other stuff. I don't know if like what which one of these are built into the, the Git source tree by default, but I think Git lens gives you a bunch of additional stuff. I think they got some like paid version as well too, if you want to use that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I got the material icon theme. So it's kind of subtle, but all these cool icons on the left, those are actually coming from this material icon theme that I have set up. So this one's a cool thing to have set up. It just kind of makes your icons look really nice and a lot more visually appealing in my opinion. Let's see, post CSS. I think I use this for like Tailwind. I don't remember if I need to have this set up or not. I think I do. Whenever you're using Tailwind, you have like a global CSS file. I, don't, I think if you don't have post CSS, it complains about all this stuff. So that's the reason why I have that set up. Uh, Prisma. This is needed if you're going to be working with the Prisma schema. Basically what this does is as you type in different things, it'll like automatically add the different relationships that you might need. So for example, let's say a user needs to have a new model called like a homework or something. And I'll just go ahead and put that in ID. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the user and say the user has a lot of homeworks. Homeworks, homework array. And when I save this, you'll notice that it automatically added all the stuff I needed on the homework model. Like it added the user ID, it created this reference to point the user ID to the actual user. For some reason, it keeps adding uppercase like models. I don't like doing that. I don't know what the best way is in Prisma, but just you need to have this extension set up if you're working with Prisma because like otherwise this will just be a bunch of gray text with no syntax highlighting and no additional stuff that helps you fill it out. Tailwind IntelliSense. So if you're working with Tailwind, um, this is the one that if I go to like the teacher dashboard real quick and I go to any class, when I do a control space, 
and I start typing in one of the Tailwind classes like BG, this is the thing that shows me all the different colors I can kind of type. So if I wanted like an orange, I'll just do like that. And now I see all the oranges popping up here. So the Tailwind IntelliSense is definitely, it definitely needed install this extension if you're working with Tailwind. Tailwind. And I think that's all the extensions I kind of use. If you have any suggestions of like other extensions I should use, uh, let me know. I used to use Atom and there's like this cool one when you type, it like shakes your screen and like shows fireworks and stuff. I wish VS Code had something similar because I, I found it fun. I don't remember what that was. But I think that'd be cool to have like when I'm coding. It'd probably, probably be more distracting than it would be useful. But so yeah, those are my, my, my things. Those are my extensions I use in VS Code. Let me know what you guys use. Give me suggestions. Give me feedback. I'm always game to try new extensions. People do kind of send me extension extensions and tell me like, hey, check this one out. And sometimes I install them and it says my VS Code has been corrupted. So like I'm kind of cautious about installing new themes and extensions because sometimes it just messes up my whole VS Code. I don't know if that's just me or if that's happened to anyone else, but it's kind of annoying and troublesome to like have to like restart VS Code or reinstall it when I install an extension. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Have a good day. Happy coding.